All right, guys, so we're in the shop and I'm gonna make some data cards for this uh, local club match tomorrow. And um, you're gonna need some stuff. It's really simple. Um, obviously, you need a ballistic computer program, whether that be gathering your data from an iPhone or something like a Kestrel. And you're gonna need some pens. I got right here in this, uh, this little sketch kit that I have from a company called Battleboard. It's pretty cool. It's like a modernized sketch kit. You're gonna need some three by five cards and I like color coding these things. The reason I like color coding them is because my eyeballs can like, they, they get attracted to the colors. So what I'll do is I'll do my range to the target in black. I'll do the dope in uh, red, and then I'll do left wind or wind from left to right in blue and right to left in green. Um, this range that we're going to shoot on, I probably won't do a left to right wind just because the, the range is going to be 600 yards and in, and we don't really have to worry about, uh, you know, different wind directions with, with regard to spin drift. So we're just going to leave that off. Um, and I'm going to pull my data from the, uh, the iPhone today with the Hornady four degree of freedom solver. And, uh, we'll do a little screen share and kind of walk you guys through that process when we get there. Um, for those of you guys who don't use uh, a ballistic calculator from an iPhone and you're just relying on your Kestrel, the one thing that you want to make sure that you do with the Kestrel, um, it's a little bit more time consuming to pull it from the Kestrel just because you got to click through all the stuff. Um, but the main thing that you need to be concerned about is making sure that your environment, and when you go into weather, um, you want to make sure that that's, uh, the capture is turned off or the update is turned off. We're going to do a screen share here real quick to show you. So... I'm going to open up the Kestrel. I'm going to hit my gearbox button. I'm going to go to uh, ballistics. And then we're going to go down here to environment. And we're going to make that environment not live. And we're going to lock it. And the reason we're going to lock it is it depends on where you're pulling data from. If you were in your house and this thing was sitting around, um, as an example, like mine's like 65 degrees right now. Um, but tomorrow it's going to be 85. Actually, it's going to be pretty close to 100 degrees tomorrow. So what we're going to do with the with this is we're going to manually update all of this stuff in here. So we can go down to temperature and we'll increase the temperature to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to increase our station pressure to whatever the range is at. And so I know that range is like 2,200 feet. So we'll make that station pressure uh, like 27, uh, 27.6 for our station pressure. Relative humidity, it'll probably be somewhere around 20% 20, 20 tomorrow. So we'll set that. And then it'll automatically adjust your density altitude for those of you guys that are running density altitudes. Unfortunately, the Ford off solver on the, the Castro here does not have the range card function, which is kind of a huge bummer. Um, so that's why I'm gonna drift over here to my iPhone and pull this data from my iPhone using the Hornady Ford off solver. So we're gonna do a screen share with you on this to show you how I get this thing set up. So we go inside, I'm gonna open up the Hornady app and I'm gonna select my 6.5 trainer. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to edit environment. It's in the upper left-hand corner. That range is 2,200 feet. We can see it here at 2,200. And that will automatically adjust our pressure to 27.6, which is the station pressure. That's really important to remember. There's a difference between station pressure and um, uh, barometric pressure. So temperature, tomorrow I'm gonna to plug in a temperature of 100 degrees, because that's about what it's gonna be while we're shooting. Ah, you know what, let me back it off. Maybe make that 95. I'm gonna put my humidity down at about 25%. It doesn't really matter um, for the ranges that we're shooting. You could leave it at 0%, 50%, or 100%, and you wouldn't see any perceptible change at 600 yards at all, uh, even with the 308. So hit done. Hit save. Now we got our environment all squared away. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my wind speed. This is important. And so this is this goes back to our gun number conversation that we've talked about a lot on the podcast. And so as we do this, we're gonna make sure that we bring our wind rows over to from 270, from left to right. So most of you guys that are shooting cartridges like the, the, the 6.5 Creedmoors and the six millimeters, you probably have those bullets really well matched to their to their uh, ideal rate of twist. So spin drift can pretty much be inconsequential inside a grand. So that's just a little food for thought. So for me, I'm going to make my range 600 yards, enter distance, select that. 
And now I'm gonna cruise over here to my wind speed number and I'm gonna slide that wind speed number to, I'll start out at six miles an hour. Okay, so for me at six miles an hour from 270 degrees, left to right wind, range of 600 yards, my impact windage is 0.6 mils. Okay, so that means my gun right now is sitting at a six mile an hour gun. Okay, so now that we understand that, we can get into the range card and start building out our data card. What I like to do is fill out the top information here with all of my gun information. So that way I can take that card and kind of toss it back into, um, back into my binder and use that card for the same environmental conditions uh, for the next time I'm going to shoot. So now I'm gonna draw my range breakdowns and for this rifle, and this range, we're only shooting out to about 650 yards. So I'm not gonna make something super detailed. Um, if you wanted to run this range card, just make sure that you fit all the information in there so that you can run it all the way out to, uh, to like however far, 1200, 1300 yards. So I'm gonna set my max range card distance here. I'm gonna change that from 1500. I'm gonna make it 650. I'm gonna set my interval, my table in 10 yards and um, We'll just see how that sets us up. It's probably a little bit too granular, but it's not a big deal. So now we got our range card here, and all we do is we roll to, I start off with 150 yards. I'm gonna use a red pen, and I'm gonna write in for 150 yards. My dope is 0.5 mils. And then my wind, because I know what my constant is, I'm gonna have a six mile per hour wind. So I'm gonna write a six, and then 0.1, okay? So that way I know for a six mile an hour wind, that's a 0.1 mil hold, okay? So then I'm just gonna fill everything in. I'm gonna draw my straight line and we'll take it out to 650 yards. All right, so we got that dope card filled out. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so now what, uh, obviously it's a short range, so my dope card ends at 650 yards. So um, it can be helpful when you throw this into a wrist coach and have extra space over here in the white side. So if you need to write anything more detailed uh, to remind you for the stage so you don't forget something, it's handy to have too. And so what I'm gonna do next is slide this into my, uh, my wrist coach and I will show you guys when we get out to the match how I mark off ranges for this data card to help me remember what I need to do for the shooting stage. So check you out at the range.